So Apple just wrapped up WWDC 2025 and if you're an iPhone, iPad, Mac, Watch or even an Apple TV user, your device is about to get a very futuristic look with the new software updates and we'll talk more about that in the video ahead. And this new bold new look that Apple is getting you, it's kind of a transition that happened from iOS 6 to 7, very different and this seems like an overhaul in the design. So here's everything that Apple announced at this year's WWDC and basically what's relevant if you are a general user. Let's talk about it in the video. Let's start with the biggest visual update, which is the new design. Apple has introduced something called liquid glass, which is basically a stunning new UI look that brings very translucent glassy like look across Apple devices and this design makes your home screen, your widgets and basically the entire app interface more context aware and fluid. Now the icons in the background adapt subtly to your wallpapers and the environment making this a very 3D like very subtle unified across all of your devices in both light and dark mode by the way and it's coming to all of the devices which basically as old as iPhone 14. Now people are confused with the naming here, iOS 26, what happened to 19? Well basically Apple is officially ditching the older versions and straight away jumping to a format which is more year based. So instead of iOS 19 you'll see iOS 26 and macOS 26 and so on. I think that's an easier format to follow. One of the most game changing features is live translation. You'll now be able to translate conversations, FaceTime calls and even messages in real time and the best part is you will be able to do this offline. Now iMessage also gets a boost with AI assisted writing, translations and even features like polls, reactions and typing indicators in group chats. So I think all of these Apple intelligence features are slowly trickling down to mainstream app integrations which I feel is great and you'll be able to see most of these app integrations in the future updates. But the best part is Apple intelligence is now getting better. It will be able to integrate and understand what's happening on your display and be able to tell you and help you with uh, cross references and even online searches. And people who have USB-C on their iPhones, you're getting a new feature which is called stage manager for the iOS. Now what you will be able to do is connect your iPhone to an external display and run multiple applications in resizable windows, basically turning your iPhone into a mini desktop. Now, this kind of a feature we have already seen on Samsung with their Dex and now it's coming to the iPhone, which is great. The good thing is the camera app also gets a very different Vision OS inspired floating UI and I really like this that Apple is looking into the future with this design. And Apple is finally allowing eSIM transfers from iPhone to the Android wirelessly with uh, QR codes and this is great because a lot of people want to transfer eSIMs and move to Android or back. So I think this whole eSIM transfer feature will be really helpful. On the iPad side, Apple is kind of closing the gap between tablets and laptops with the iPad 26 version, which introduces support for background tasks and live activities. So things like downloads, renders, and even uploads will be running in the background, but you will be able to see them in front of you and you will be able to switch apps. The Files app has also been rebuilt with a better file organization system, colors and syncing is happening. So you are getting these multiple windows, better keyboard and mouse support and moreover an improved layout engine which kind of feels more like Mac OS and it confuses me. What will happen to the laptops if your iPad kind of gives you that laptop utility now? Mac OS is also getting a major refresh too and now it's officially called Mac OS Tahoe and it's getting the same elegant liquid glass design to the desktop as well. Spotlight is now smarter acting like a command center whether you're running multiple tasks and searching, running shortcuts and even sending messages within Spotlight it will be able to do everything and this continuity between your phone and your Mac now becomes more seamless. Apple intelligence on the Mac powers features like Genmoji, AI assisted writing and on device translation and even Safari gets more efficient and faster with a cleaner UI and for better battery management also these AI features are being integrated. Gamers are getting a new games app with leaderboards, overlays and in short I would say Mac OS Tahoe is more personal, faster and that integration of AI is seeming to be more better this time around. Watch OS 26 saw one of its biggest updates, especially for those who reply on the Apple Watch for 
most of their fitness and health metrics. Now, there is now a training load audio feature that gives you detailed insights into your workout intensity on your uh, AirPods, which is great. The Vitals app now aggregates key health metrics like your sleep, heart rate, uh, variability, resting rate, most of the health metrics and gives you early warning signs if something feels off. Now, all of this is being analyzed by AI and I think it will really change the way fitness works on the watch. There's also a new feature where you just flick the Apple Watch to cancel calls and even silent some of the audio profiles. So some of these tweaks are coming to the watch OS. And finally, Apple Vision Pro gets spatial widgets and these new hyper real persona of TARS like floating heads when people come to you to talk virtually. It looks a bit scary to me, but on, honestly, Apple says that they look more natural, the hair, the side profiles, lashes, skin details, everything feels more genuine this time around. So some updates there as well. Now for gamers, big update because Apple is collaborating with the Sony PlayStation ecosystem and you are getting support for the PSVR 2 Sense controllers as well and some handy features like scroll to look basically now you can scroll to control the ui of the vision ecosystem and i think this one is also a good feature to have and you won't have to use your hands to uh, control these features so whether you are an iphone user ipad mac apple watch any apple device ecosystem user your experience is about to get more intelligent more seamless more helpful without compromising on your privacy which is great now the interface feels more glass like more futuristic and your everyday apps cross device integration workflows will feel like magic but the thing is with these updates apple is saying that you get a new look but you get a smarter version of your apple ecosystem now all of these updates roll out later this year likely with the iphone 17 lineup and also the future apple devices but the developer betas are already live public betas will go live in july and most of these features will be available on all of the devices in the coming months and apple hasn't given a timeline yet but they will be there soon hopefully you found this video informational hit the like button right there and subscribe to the channel for more tech content like this i'll see you very soon